Let's get right into it. Number 7. The Brain's Slow Boot Up Imagine buying the latest, shiniest laptop, turning it on, and then realizing it takes three years to load the home screen. That's basically your brain at birth. Your brain isn't just underdeveloped, it's practically still in beta testing. At birth, your neurons are there, sure, but the wiring between them is like an unfinished subway system. Tracks half laid, stations not connected, and the occasional train crash if you look at a ceiling fan too long. The part of your brain that handles long-term memory, the hippocampus, doesn't just magically appear ready to store your memories. It's still busy building itself, forming connections, and learning not to drool on itself. Any memories before about age 3 are usually wiped because your hippocampus was essentially running on Windows 95 in safe mode. You were busy doing baby stuff, like learning object permanence and figuring out that your hands are yours, while your brain quietly failed to save any of it in high resolution. This is why asking someone, do you remember your own birth, is like asking if they remember the smell of a sandwich they never ate. It's not just hard, it's literally impossible. At best, you have a vague slideshow of moments that's probably been corrupted by family stories and photos. So, your earliest years? They're not missing. They were never recorded. Which means somewhere inside your skull is the psychological equivalent of an empty photo album titled Ages 0 to 3, The Lost Years. Number 6. Memories Marie Kondo Phase Your brain as a baby is a hoarder, taking in everything. Sights, sounds, smells, your aunt's perfume the exact crinkle noise of a potato chip bag. But around early childhood, it gets ruthlessly minimalist. Scientists call this synaptic pruning, which sounds fancy but is basically your brain firing the interns. Neurons that don't get used enough get trimmed away, like dead branches. This makes your thinking more efficient, but it also means bye-bye to a lot of those early, unimportant-seeming experiences. It's like your brain went through its cluttered garage of memories and tossed out everything except the emotional heirlooms, your first pet, your favorite toy, that one time you fell face first into a cake, the rest, gone. Not because your brain hates you, but because carrying every irrelevant detail is a waste of precious mental storage. Unfortunately, the smell of the hospital blanket you were wrapped in didn't make the cut. Basically, baby brain was a messy desktop, and toddler brain hit, select all, delete. Number 5. No sense of time. Picture living in a world where every moment is just now. No past, no future, just an endless loop of, what's this? followed by, ooh, shiny. That's baby life. Your sense of time as a newborn is about as developed as a goldfish's attention span. Adults remember things in a timeline, what happened first, what happened next, and why it matters. But without that structure, memories just float around disconnected. Babies don't have a reliable mental filing system yet. The memory cabinet is there, but it's missing folders, labels, and the little plastic tabs. Psychologists call this temporal framework, and without it, your brain can't easily place events in a meaningful order. Imagine trying to recall your day if everything, breakfast, that awkward meeting, brushing your teeth, was just one big blob of feelings and images. You'd remember something, but not enough to make a coherent story. So even if your brain caught a few snapshots of babyhood, without a sense of before and after, they just dissolve, like cotton candy in a bathtub. Number 4. Your brain was basically a construction site. You know that constant background noise at a construction zone? Clanging, drilling, random shouting? That was your brain during infancy. Instead of building skyscrapers, it was cranking out new neurons, connecting them at breakneck speed, and trying to install every sensory upgrade possible. This insane developmental pace leaves little bandwidth for meticulously saving each moment. Long-term memory isn't the priority when your brain's main goal is survival, like learning to breathe, eat, and not roll off the couch. Memory consolidation the process of moving information from short-term into long-term storage, was still under construction with coming soon signs all over your neural pathways. And because this constant rewiring changes how your brain processes information, even if something was stored, it could be overwritten or scrambled later. Think of it as repeatedly installing updates on your phone until the original files just vanish. Basically, Baby U was running the most chaotic renovation project of all time and archiving memories was somewhere around priority number 73. Number 3. Emotions on max volume. Babies are emotional pyromaniacs. They don't just feel hungry. They feel like they've been abandoned in the desert for three days. They don't just get startled. They experience full DEFCON 1 panic. And while strong emotions can sometimes boost memory in adults, in babies, it's a different story. High emotional intensity with low mental organization just creates a swirl of sensations. Crying, warmth, fear, comfort, without a coherent event to attach them to. Your brain records pieces but not the plot. 
Plus, babies have no concept of perspective. You can't tell yourself, I'm upset now, but this will pass. Everything feels like it's forever. That lack of emotional context makes it nearly impossible for your brain to neatly file the memory away for later. It's like recording a movie while shaking the camera, zooming in randomly, and turning the audio to static. So yeah, baby, you felt everything intensely, but remembered basically none of it. Number 2. Dreams. Reality. Same thing. When you were a baby, your brain didn't draw a clean line between real events and imagination partly because your imagination was basically just a weird soup of sensory fragments. Babies spend a shocking amount of time in REM sleep, which is the stage most associated with dreaming. And their dreams? Scientists think they're not plot-driven adventures like adults have, but more like random clips stitched together. Faces, colors, voices, flashes of light. Without a strong sense of reality versus dreamland, your earliest memories might have been half-constructed from dream content in the first place. So even if something felt real to you then, it could have been just a nighttime mashup of your mom's face, the sound of a vacuum cleaner, and a giant floating pacifier. This blurring of the line between waking life and dream life means your brain didn't exactly have a reliable highlight reel to look back on later. It's like your life's earliest scrapbook was made by a toddler who cut random pages from magazines and glued them together at an angle. So yeah, when your memories are 40% reality and 60% psychedelic dream nonsense, they're not exactly long-term keepers. Number 1. Adult Brain Gaslighting Okay, here's the wild part. You might actually have fragments of baby memories, but your grown-up brain refuses to believe them. As you get older, your mind gets better at editing memories to make them feel logical and consistent. Anything that doesn't match your adult perspective gets tossed out as unreliable. This is called reconstructive memory, and it means your brain actively reshapes your past to fit your present understanding. That random sensory flash you have from when you were maybe two, your adult brain will either ignore it, overwrite it with family stories, or decide it's just a dream. Over time, the stuff that doesn't make narrative sense gets quietly deleted. It's like your brain's PR department combs through your past and says, yeah, these messy, context-free scraps, not great for the autobiography, let's stick to the cute toddler photos instead. So even if a few baby memories did sneak through the developmental chaos, your current self is the one pressing the delete key, without even realizing it. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.